Oh, hi there, everyone. Thanks so much for showing up for your math learning. I'm Mr. Jennings, your humble math servant. And here I am walking through practice quiz number two. I'm going to do all the questions. I'm going to explain all my moves. If you have any questions about what I do, pipe up, speak out, that's fine. Or message me in the comments on YouTube where this video will live forever or until YouTube no longer exists. All right. So our first skill that we want to make sure we have is can you multiply fractions? Multiplying fractions is straightforward. So we're going to turn this one into a fraction. We're going to multiply top times top over bottom times bottom. And that's going to give us 24 on 3, which reduces to 8. But there's an easier way, folks. Cancel it here. That's uh, 4. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 2 times 4 on top is 8. Same answer. Okay. Over here. Uh, for those of you who are working medium level questions, you'll notice that we have negative times a negative. That's like flicking the light switch off and then on again. So the answer will be positive. Okay. One way that you can approach these types of questions for us to make things easier is to rewrite them. So nine is three times three. Uh, 35 is five times seven. 14 is two times seven. And 15 is three times five. Okay. And we keep this multiplication. Notice I already did negative times negative as a positive. I'm not going to include that on the next line of my solution because it's going to be a positive number at the end of the day. So long as I get it right at the end of the day, that's good. Then I get out my favorite pen in mathematics, the cancel pen. And I cancel anything that lives upstairs and downstairs from the same factor. All right, I'm allowed to do that because 7 divided by 7 is 1. So that's uh, a thing that we can do. We can just cancel there. And then I have to be careful that this 5 and that 5 they're not allowed to cancel because they live on the same floor. They're going to get together and party. So then our answer looks like multiply all this out. This is equal to 3 times 2 on the top. Just whatever's left multiplies and 5 times 5 on the bottom. And that gives us 6 on 25. Delightful. All right. When it gets spicy, you really want these skills, okay? You really want to be able to rewrite those as, oh, negative 96, man, 96. I think that could be something like 32 times uh, 3. That's 96. And then 175, whew, that's 7 times 5 times 5. Okay, that's 175. And then 35 over there, well, what can I do with 35? Well, that's uh, 7 times. You keep that. I don't need that. You keep it. There we go. Yeah. You're going to want to look at this video at home tonight and uh, check your answers. Okay. 3 times 35 is uh, 7 times 5. So we've got over here. I rewrite the number 35 as 7 times 5. Oops. That's a strange, strange way to write 5. I'm a little distracted. And then on the bottom, 48. Well, 48 I can write as 16 times 3. Okay. Cool. And now I keep going here. 32 and 16 can cancel. That leaves a 2. And then uh, the 3s cancel here. Bonk, bonk. The 7s cancel. And the 5s cancel. There's so many cancels. It's just so nice. And so we end up with 2 on 5. 2 and 5 are the only numbers that survived that wave of cancellations. So it's actually not that hard once you learn to see numbers in this way. All right, let's keep going. Suppose we have now dividing fractions. Dividing fractions is a, is a related skill to multiplying fractions. It's the same thing, except there's one twist. One of the fractions does a little twist. Okay, So if this is multiply fractions, bang, bang. This is divide fractions. First, you take one of the fractions, you do that. Now it's multiply, and you go bang, bang. Okay, And that's how you do it. So in this one, we want to keep flip change is one way you talk about it, or invert and multiply. We're going to take this bottom one and flip it. And then, so we keep that top one, 12 on 5. We're going to flip that bottom one, 7 on 12. Notice it flipped. And then if we notice this cancel, that's great. 12 divided by 12 is 1, so that can cancel. So we have final answer, 7 on 5. Over here, we just have a few more fancy cancels. So I'm going to rewrite this as multiplication. 70 on 27 multiplied by 18 on 49. Rewriting these as multiplication, 70 could be written as 7 times 10. 27 can be written as 3 times 9. 18 can be written as 2 times 9. 
and 49 can be written as 7 squared, or 7 times 7. Watch that cancels. I get out my favorite math pen, which is the cancel pen, and I go cancel, 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 cancel. And then that's all the cancels I can do. And so then I end up with the delightful number, 10 times 2 on the top. These still multiply to give me 20. And these multiply on the bottom to give me 21. 20 on 21. So 49 on 18 goes into 70 on 27 very nearly once, but not quite once. Let's keep going. Ah, my favorite number makes its first appearance on our quizzes. Actually, no, it was an answer on one of the last quizzes. Anyhow, yes, knowing my favorite number is useful because I will often use it. So I keep the top one. I flip the bottom one. I rewrite all these as multiplications. Uh, I'm going to start with the bottom ones because they're simpler. 5 times 11 and 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So I warned you that this skill would be on the quiz and it kind of still is. Being able to factorize numbers and uh, break numbers down as multiplications is still useful. 121 happens to be 11 times 11. And 144, well, I'm just looking for as many factors 3 as I can pull out of there. And 144 happens to be 9 times 16 is 144. Okay. So now I can see this 9 can cancel two of those 3s. 3 times 3 is 9, so that cancels. One of those 11s cancels away. And I end up with six, 16 times 11 on top over 5 times 3. So I carefully work out that 16 times 11 is 176, and 5 times 3, I carefully work that that out is 15. Because 16, 11, 5, and 3 share no factors, this is already reduced, so I don't need to worry about reducing my answer. I reduce as I go. It's nice, eh? It's a good trick. Aren't you loving this? I love it. All right, so that's the easy part. Yes, the easy part is multiplying and dividing with fractions. Harder with integers, it's kind of fun. Uh, adding and subtracting is a little trickier because we have to do this get a common denominator thing with adding and subtracting fractions only. We don't need to do common denominator with multiplication and, and division. Denominator. Yes, do that. Okay. Here I can uh, use one of two ways to do this. I can always do this. This is the, the simplest way that I can give you. I'm first going to take this number here, 6, and multiply the opposite fraction top and bottom by that, and then take this number 3, multiply the opposite fraction top and bottom by that. This will always work. It will always create a common denominator, and it's going to be harder than it needs to be, but it's also easier to get your common denominator. So you do you. Okay, so on my next line, I'm going to have over there 6 times 2 on the top, which is 12, over 18, plus, this is plus, not multiply, 5 times 3 over there, 15 over 18. Notice, common denominator, hooray, and then I get 27 over 18, and then I have to notice that 27 over 18 could be written as uh, 3 times 9 over 2 times 9, and our 9s cancel. 3 times 9 was 27. 2 times 9 was 18. This is an 18. And the 9s cancel, so our final answer is 3 on 2. Okay? There is an easier way. The easier way was over here. Instead of going to common denominator 18, you can spot that you can get to common denominator 6 with that move. You need to be able to spot that move to use this, this version. 4 on 6 plus 5 on 6 equals 9 on 6. And like always, like often, sorry, we will often have something that we can reduce. 9 on 6 is 3 times 3 on 2 times 3. And then those cancel, so we have 3 on 2. Good. How about over here? Well, I'm, I'm not going to show you this trick for all of them where... It gives me the easier way to get the denominator. I'm going to do the, the lowest common denominator here. So here I notice that 8 and 12 can both reach 24 in their respective times tables. 8 times 3 is 24. 12 times 2 is 24. They're both nice ways to divide up a day, don't you agree? 12 would be a.m. and p.m. 
Eight would be eight hours sleeping, eight hours playing, eight hours working. A nice way to spend your life. Uh, so here we go. We're going to upgrade this one by three and upgrade this one by two. And that gives us this next line here, which is three times 13 is 39 over 24 plus 22 over 24. And when we do 39 plus 22, we very carefully get 61 over 24. Okay. And if you're struggling with, uh, you know, 39 plus 22, that's understandable. I would think of this as 40 minus 1, that's 39, plus 20 plus 2, that's 22. 40 plus 20 is 60, 2 minus 1 is 1, so I have 61. That's how I kind of divide that up in my head to get it right, very carefully. And then I do it a different way in my head, make sure it's still 61. If I get something different, then I check and find my error. See how much math I'm doing for simple problems? That's why I'm getting so much practice every time I do a single practice problem. And that will increase my list, my, sorry, my, my abilities. Okay, now I check, can this be reduced? Can that be reduced, 61 on 24? 61 happens to be prime, it's a prime number. So uh, the more you look at factorizing numbers, the, the faster you'll spot primes, and it's very useful. 61 is prime, so this can't be reduced. That's final answer. So I circle it for the purpose of news marking me. Their benefit. Okay, here we have negative 3 tenths plus negative 11 sixteenths. I notice that I can get to 160, but actually 80 is the lowest common multiple of 10 and 16. So I'm going to upgrade this one by 8. And I'm going to upgrade this one by 5. And that's going to up, upgrade both of my fractions to over 80s. So I have negative 24 over 80. I still should have equal sign there for communication. Uh, and then this plus minus business, well, that's just minus. If I'm adding a negative number, that's the same as subtracting. So I'm going down again. So I have minus 55 on 80. And now I, can, I could take another line to write this all over 80 if it helps me keep things straight. Minus 24 minus 55 over 80. Now, some of you are making errors at this level where you have negative minus another number and you get confused. <laughs> Sorry, some of you make funny facial expressions. I love it. Okay, um, so think of that as like you're $24 in debt and you take out another $55. Both of those are going in the same direction, further negative. So we're going to be deep in debt now. We're $79 in debt. So this is the number negative 79 on 80. I mean, if your numerator is one away from your denominator, you hardly need to check, check for common factors because there ain't none. And, uh, and 79 is, is prime anyway. Yeah, so let's keep going. All right, so that's our final answer, negative 79 on 80. So now let's take a look at fraction subtraction. Subtracting fractions is the same as adding fractions. It's just that... Uh, we're minus instead of plus. So here I'm going to use that trick of going to common denominator 10. So when I multiply there on top, 2 times 4 is 8. That's multiply there. 2 times 5 is 10. 8 tenths minus 1 tenth. Well, 8 is something minus 1 is something is 7 of that thing. So this is 7 tenths. 7 tenths can't be reduced. That's done final answer. Notice the same thing. I just keep minus there. Over here... Well, 6 and 5 ain't share no factors. So I got to multiply top and bottom 6 there and top and bottom 5 here. So that's going to be equal to 5 times 5, 25. 5 times 6, 30. Minus 3 times 6, 18. 5 times 6, 30. So that's going to be 7 on 30. 25 minus 18, 7. Done. Final answer. Hey, Mr. Jennings, I thought you were giving us fraction subtraction questions. This one is addition. What are you doing to us? Well, I'm playing crazy tricks on you when I go to spicy level, okay? And this one's not that crazy, but imagine you start with negative 5 21sts of a chocolate bunny and someone gives you 11 ninths of a chocolate bunny. All right, I admit, I have trouble visualizing chocolate bunnies cut up into such fine 
divisions, but you could if you were really good at visualizing chocolate bunnies. Bite enough of their heads off and maybe you'll develop that ability. I don't know. Do you eat them from the head down or the feet up? Oh, I see. Anyone head down? Everyone's head down here? No one eats their chocolate bunny feet up? Lucy, does that facial expression mean like, how did we get here? Or what kind of monster are you? <laughs> or a little of both? A little of both, okay. All right. So one way we could approach this problem is to reorganize it. 11 ninths minus 5 21sts. We could do that. I would like that. That's okay. You can do that. And uh, because we, we kept the sign with the number. So when we do that, it's fine. So it is a subtraction. It's just mixed up a little bit. And now I'm going to upgrade this one by 7. I see that 63 is the best common denominator I can get. 21 times 3 is 63. 7 times 9 is 63. 63 exists in both of their times tables, and it happens to be the smallest number that exists in both the 9 and the 21 times tables. So I, I scale up to that. I have up here 7 times 11 is 77 over 63. And then 5 times 3 is... 15 on 63. 77 minus 15 is 62 on 63. And um, gosh, if I had known the amount of times I buried like something with a numerator denominator separated by one in this quiz, I just did that subconsciously. Like, I don't know. I didn't do that on purpose. It's kind of neat. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, but Mr. Jennings, I'm not very good at word problems. That's why. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What's the question? Did I make an error? See how excited I am? I'm like so excited that I might have made an error. Where? I don't see it. Oh, okay. Is your error? Hooray! That's one of the reasons why we're doing this, so that you can find your errors. And then, the, the cool thing that you do when you have an error is you say, how did I make that error? Not just what my error is, but how did it happen? Did it happen because I don't understand the process yet? Then that's, Mr. Jennings, uh, explain this to me again, because you're bad at your job, and you didn't explain it right the first time. Okay? Sometimes it helps to put the responsibility on me. It'll make you feel better. And it's a funny joke that we both can share. I'll laugh, you'll laugh. We'll both, we'll both learn how to divide fractions properly. Okay? Uh, if it's like, oh, I just you know, did 3 minus 5 and called that negative 8. That was silly. I know it's negative 2. Then you also think, like, well, why did you make that error? Oh, I added them together, but then thought the answer was negative. That's not quite how it works. I should, next time, visualize a thermometer or visualize a bank balance and a, a number line and get it right. Okay? So that, that's the process. Word problems. Try as many as you can. Okay, I don't mind if I do. So here we go. Mitchie Marner. He's famous for getting assists, but not really goals. Because, like, say he scores five goals, we'd expect that he has like about 12 assists over his career. That was pretty well true at the time I wrote this problem. That's probably still true. He still is very heavily assists over goals. No, this is the way you read these types of sentences, okay? This is, this is the important part, where it says his ratio of goals to assists. Notice it says goals to assists. That maps down here, okay? Goals to assists. That colon in the ratio is read 5 to 12. So it maps onto the previous sentence, 5 goals to 12 assists. That's how those are read. And once you know that, then it becomes easier to navigate these types of problems. So we could say like 5 goals to 12 assists. Historically, and then I tell you Wow, my, my writing is really hard to read sometimes. But actually, so far this season, he has 20 goals. That's a very strange way to do a G, Mr. Jennings. Goals. And I want to know how many assists. Call it A. There's some number. Well, here's one way to notice it. Ah, I notice that he has four times that number there. So I just need to do multiply by four over here. And then, so that would be 12 times four. That would be about 48 assists. Okay, and there's our answer. If I notice this scale factor, that's one way I can do it. Okay, and then this part is important. Do this in all word problems. Therefore, we would expect Mitch. I almost 
what am I doing? Marner to have about 48 goals. There. Write a sentence. The sentence shows not only you understand that you have found the answer, but what your answer represents in this context. So that's a great way to close the loop on your learning and apply what you know. Here's another way to do this. I have mentioned before, uh, at least in the other class, that I hate, uh, uh, hate ratios. I would always do this in fractions. Five goals to 12 assists. That's 5G to 12A. And I know that that's going to be 20G to some number of assists down there. Okay, and then I see, well, I can, I can scale this one up by four on four to get uh, these numbers to be the same. And so then there's, there's my 48 there. You can also approach this one with fractions. Turn your ratios into fractions and make your life easier because then you get to use your fraction skills and everyone's happy. All right, now here's this, this one's fun. Joey Chestnut, he's eating hot dogs real fast. 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Can you believe it? So fast. I can believe it. Anyway, Mickey Sudo, on the other hand, eats 49 hot dogs in six minutes. Uh, I guess in the women's competition, they only eat hot dogs for six minutes instead of 10. I don't know. I don't make the rules. Um, and we want to know, who's the faster hot dog eater? Well, first we have to find a way to compare 75 hot dogs to 10 minutes. And we want to compare that to 49 hot dogs in six minutes. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We can throw them together in fractions and then compare them, or we could scale up both ratios to some common number. I would use a common number of minutes. What do you think? Should we do how many hot dogs they can eat per half hour or how many hot dogs they can each eat per hour? What should we do? Sometimes I, I look for student participation and, uh, and it, it doesn't speed us up. Per minute? Uh, we're going to get weird decimals. Half hour. Per half hour. Let's go per half hour. Okay. So if we are looking at how many hot dogs we can eat per half hour, I'm going to look at Joey Chestnut's numbers and multiply them by three. Okay. That's going to take 10 minutes up to 30 minutes. And it's going to take 70, I'm going to multiply that by 3. Because if he eats 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes, he ought to eat 225 hot dogs in 30 minutes. Okay? So 225 hot dogs in a half hour. That's his rate. And is that correct? Yes, it's correct. Yes. Um, if we were to go to hours, we'd be multiplying by six. So he would be eating 450 hot dogs per hour. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing with Mickey Sudo, except we have to scale her numbers up. We've got to go six minutes to a half hour. So we're going to multiply by five, both numbers. And so then 49 times five is 245 hot dogs. And 6 times 5 is 30 minutes. So who's the faster hot dog eater? It's easy, easy to see now, right? You just got to let them both eat hot dogs for the same amount of time. And then you just compare straight across. Who's the faster hot dog eater, everybody? Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> yes, Mickey Sudo is faster. She's faster by 20 hot dogs per 30 minutes. So I might say that this way. Mickey eats 20 more hot dogs per 30 minutes, okay? Or two thirds more hot dog per minute. Wow, look at that. I just did that math in my head. Watch this. Watch the math that I did in my head and marvel at my amazing math abilities, everybody. I really need some praise for my amazing math abilities. I had 20 over 30, 20 hot dogs per minute, and I reduced that to 2 over 3 hot dogs per minute. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. I did that in my head. You can learn to do that in your head, too. <laughs> okay, you probably can do that in your head, too, uh, but it's that type of stuff that makes me look good at math. I'm not that good at math. I just make it simple. Yes? Wouldn't he slow down after a while? Like eventually he would uh, not be at the same rate like, throughout the entire 30 minutes. 
That is true. So what you're, what you're now asking is this question, can I eat hot dogs at a linear rate? Meaning, will my rate remain unchanged as I continue to eat hot dogs at the rate of 7.5 hot dogs per minute? And I think we can all agree the answer is no. I will not continue to eat hot dogs at that rate because, hey, who could? But it allows us to compare the two different rates if we just expand them mathematically to say who was eating hot dogs at a faster rate per minute. And these would be ways that we could do that. Actually, Mickey Sudo is faster by two-thirds of a hot dog, don't you know? We just did the math. You can watch the video at home. He got banned? Who was he using performance enhancing hot dogs? He got banned from it because it was too good. Oh, I see. Okay. Now this one is tricky. This one is like the properly spicy one. Um, and this is a this is a tricky question. Let's take a look at it. Lian's parents want Lian to be motivated to practice her math and her ratios and all that. So they created this system where she can spend time watching TV. That's what she wants to do. She really wants to watch Spider-Man No Way Home, which happens to be 2 hours and 24 minutes, so 28 minutes long. So they know that she's motivated. But um, they want her to work with this ratio and make sure that she spends 4 minutes um, watching television for every three minutes she spends working on mathematics. That is to say, if she watches four minutes of TV, she has to do three minutes of math practice. 40 minutes of TV, half an hour of math practice. Uh, an hour and 20 watching movies. An hour watching of doing math practice, et cetera, et cetera. Just gotta keep the ratios right, right? So, she's already done 65 minutes of math practice today. She wants to know how much more math practice she needs to do so that she can put her feet up, put Spider-Man No Way Home on, put her feet up, and not have to interrupt her, her movie to do math. So let's find this out. Okay. First step, how many minutes is that, 2 hours and 28 minutes? This is 148 minutes, or 120 plus 28 equals 148 minutes. So... And we know that, and now let's work out how much total practice she'd need to do to open up that much TV time, okay? So we've got these ratios. Four on three has got to be equal to 148 on something. That's going to be TV time, okay? And I'm going to be looking for the numbers that I have to multiply top and bottom here so that when these ones multiply, I get that one. In other words... 148 divided by 4. Anyone happen to know what that is? Happens to be the most random number in randomness. Pick a number between 1 and 100. Make it random. 74. Cool. It has a 7 in it. 37. 37 is the most random number, apparently. People will most often choose this number. So if we multiply top and bottom by 37 here, that's a tricky number to find, i got to admit. It's a really weird prime. But there we are. It's a spicy question. So 4 times 37 will give us the 148 minutes that she needs. So this is how much TV time she's going to need. So 3 times 37. Can we just leave the door open a crack? 3 times 37 happens to be 111 min. And she's already practiced 65 minutes. So if we do 111 minus 65, well, that will give us, let's see, 51, uh, 40, uh, 46 minutes. She needs to do 46 minutes more math practice, then she can watch the whole movie uninterrupted. And what a life that's going to be for her, because she's going to go to a high level in math and get lots of entertainment. Isn't that great to have a balance in life? It's great, so great. All right. <sighs> Last one. Cool. I have enough time for this. That's great. All right, let's cool. Let's go. All right, Jamal. Jamal is building a pen for his dog in his backyard. Let's move my useless face over there. Relatively useless. Okay. And here is a picture of the pen. It happens to be rectangular. So that means that these are right angles. That's a fact I know about rectangles. They're all right angles. And that this is the same as that. And this is the same as that. Cool. So I might even write that over there, 15 and 1 quarter, 
28 and 3 eighths. Okay? Now, I want to know how much area will his dog have to play and how much fencing will he need to build this pen for his dog? All right? Well, the fencing will just be add all these together, right? Add that with that, with that, with that. Find the perimeter. Perimeter is going to equal 15 and 1 quarter plus 28 and 3 eighths. Oh, plus 15 and a quarter, plus 28 and 3 eighths. I just need two of them each. So I'm going to multiply whatever the result is by two. That would be one way to avoid just add, 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 add. Add, add, multiply, because I got two of each. So I need to multiply by two. Basically what I'm doing there is I'm saying, I'm going to find out how long this is, and then multiply it by two, because here's the other side. And that's perimeter, and that's uh, finding the amount of fencing. So now I've got to do 15 and 1 quarter plus 28 and 3 eighths. So that's equal to 15 plus 28 gives me 43 plus 1 quarter plus 3 eighths. I haven't added the 1 quarter and the 3 eighths yet. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply by 2 when I'm done. A quarter plus 3 eighths, rather than write that as a quarter, maybe I save some time there. Do you agree that 1 quarter is the same thing as 2 eighths? I do. Because I just multiply top and bottom by 2. Now I've got a common denominator. So great, save myself some time. So now this is equal to 43 and um, 5 eighths multiplied by 2. And now I might want to multiply that by 2. So that's my fraction multiplication again. So now I could do this as, there's one of two ways. I can do 43 multiplied by 8 plus 5, all on 8. I could, I could convert that to an improper fraction. 43 times 8 is a little big. Let's see, that's uh, 344. 43 times 8, 344. That's cool. I didn't know that until now. Indeed it is. So that's uh, equal to 344. Oh, and then I'm going to multiply this by 2, by the way, Okay, because that's what I'm doing. 344 plus 5 on 8 times 2. And so that's 349 on 8 times 2. And then I cancel, cancel. That leaves me a 4. 2 on top, 8 on bottom. Cancels, leaves a 4 on bottom. Okay, 349 on 4. At that point, maybe you go ahead and you're like, oh yeah, I'm allowed a calculator on this test. And I go, 349 divided by 4 is equal to 87 and a quarter, 87 and a quarter feet of fencing. So he's going to go out and buy 88 feet of fencing, maybe 90. Maybe they sell it by the 10 foot. Okay, 88 and 87 and a quarter. Okay, that's 349 on 4. The another way to do this would be to do 43 times 2 plus 5 on 8 times 2. Okay, and this is easier. 43 times 2 is 86. And 5 on 8 times 2 is 5 on 4. So 86 plus 5 on 4 is 87 and 1 quarter. Done. That's how much fencing. So just find the perimeter. All right, if I want to do the uh, other question, what's the area? Then I've got to do 15 and 1 quarter multiplied by 28 and 3 eighths. Why do I do that? Because area is equal to length times width, or width times length, whatever. Okay, so it's equal to those two numbers multiplied, which are, here's how I would do it on calculator. Yes, you have a calculator for this test. Isn't that great? 15.25 multiplied by, put it in brackets, 28 plus 3 divided by 8, and the bracket. There's my 28 and 3 eighths. If you don't happen to have your eighths memorized, which are 0.125, that's 1 eighth. Happens to be 5 to the 3 on the bottom, kind of like as a decimal. Anyway, 
So then I just push equals. So there, that's how much uh, area that the dog will have. It will have 432.72 or so forth. Yeah, about 433 square feet. 432 and a bit square feet. The dog's not counting that fine. So this would be a fine answer. And then I want to give my answer this way, feet squared, square foot, yeah, like that. And that's it. That's that uh, skill. Now, how would I do this longhand? That's a good question. You want to see how I do that longhand? Let's do it. I'll do it over here. I'm going to talk my way through this problem. I'm not going to write. Yeah? It's said to give the answer as a mixed number. Give answer as a mixed number of square feet in sentence form. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I should do it this way. Gosh. I would say, so here's what I could do. Um, 4, 3, 2, and 7, 1, 8, 7, 5. on 100,000. This is the most ridiculous mixed number i ever seen. The dog will have 432 and 71,875 over 100,000 square feet, which is a ridiculous amount of detail. It's ridiculous. Here's how I would do it longhand. I'm going to get a prettier answer, but I also don't care that much. You're going to get nicer uh, numbers on your problem. Okay, so 15 and a quarter multiplied by 28 and 3 eighths. So I convert both of them to improper fractions first. This is 15 times 4. That's the number of uh, holes plus 1 over 4 multiplied by 28 times 8 plus 3 over 8. This is the, my little formula to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number. If I have like A and B over C, that's equal to AC plus B over C. That's your little formula. This multiplied by that plus that over that. All right. 15 times 4 is not hard. That's 60. So we got 61 over 4 multiplied by 28 times 8 is a little bit hard. That's a 224 plus 3. So that's 227 over 8. This is a little nasty. Uh, 224 and 61 are both primes. So we just have to multiply them. That is nasty. Who made these numbers? It wasn't me. It was my colleague. I blame him. He's not here this year. Blame him. Okay. Uh, no, it's my error. It's not an error. Okay. Let's see if I'm right. 28 times 8. So we have 20 times 8 is 160. 8 times 8 is 64. 160 plus 64 is indeed 224. 224 plus 3 is 227, so I am correct. So now I multiply these. So 4 times 8, that's not bad. That's 32. 61 times 227. This is the way I would do it. Uh, 227 multiplied by 61. Do these as an area. That way you can learn to do them in your head. This will be 1, 2, oh, oh, oh. This is 200. 200 times 1. This is 20. And this is 7. Okay, and then this is 20 times uh, 60. This is 1, 2, 0, oh, 0. Oh. And then this is uh, 4, 2, 0. Oh. 420 is in there. Hilarious. Okay, and then add all those up. So that's going to be 7 on the end, a 4 there. A 4 plus 2 plus 2 is an 8. And then that's a 1 plus 2 is 3, 1. 1, 3, 8, 4, 7. <laughs> And then express that as a mixed number. But gross, 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 gross. Okay, so there is uh, there is the number of square feet that they will have. I hate, officially hate this question. It is not a great test of your skills. So I will give you something a lot nicer when it's uh, test time. It'll be in meters, and it'll be things like five and a quarter meters that actually you can work with, not like twenty-eight and three-eighths meters that are gross. Isn't that nice? And yeah, it's good news. This is part of the reason why I try these. Okay. Cedric. Cedric doesn't understand why we need a common denominator sometimes, but not other times. When we add and subtract fractions, we need them. When we're dividing and multiplying fractions, we don't need them. Okay? So, uh, Cedric, when we've got two-thirds plus one-quarter, we can't just go ahead and add those together. Because thirds ain't the same thing as quarters. It'd be like trying to add motorcycles and cars together. Okay? They're different. 
but break my cars down, somehow split each car into two motorcycles. I don't know how you do that, but then I could add them together. Each car would be worth two. Once I do that, then I can add them together. Okay? But it's kind of a weird way to think about it, Cedric. Just remember, you've got to have common denominator because you can't add things together that are different. Apples plus oranges, that type of stuff. Okay? Over here, we're just multiplying. And multiplying is straightforward, Cedric. We just multiply top times top over bottom times bottom. So that's going to be 2 over 12 or 1 over 6. But over here, Cedric, we got to get that common denominator. So this is what that looks like, Cedric. Okay. Here, I notice that 2 thirds, we're going to need to multiply that top and bottom by 4. We're going to need to multiply this one top and bottom by 3. When we multiply top and bottom, Cedric, we're not changing the number because 4 divided by 4 is 1. You're allowed to multiply by 1 all day. It doesn't change nothing. So we still have the same problem here. 8 twelfths plus 3 twelfths gives us 11 twelfths. Cedric, that's very nearly but not quite 1. And Cedric, that should not surprise you because 2 thirds is 1 third less than 1. 1 quarter is ever so slightly smaller than a third, so it ain't going to fill you up all the way to a full hole. So the fact that we're at 11 twelfths, really close but not quite 1, Shouldn't surprise you, Cedric. All right. Thanks so much for showing up for your learning, everyone. I really, I really appreciate you getting the chairs to the back of the room. Thank you, everybody.